this is Book Review Tuesday on the bike. Okay, there's only one man, also known as a machine, who can get things done, and that guy is Elon Musk. You may know him. He's got crazy awesome YouTube videos, hours and hours. There's one channel down below that's like every Elon Musk video. So I'll link that down below. Check that out if you have some time. So here's a book by Ashley Vance talking about Tesla, SpaceX, and a quest for a fantastic future. And Ashley does that. He goes into a lot of detail about its early life, the formation of Zip2, PayPal, woo, SpaceX, Tesla, Hyperloop, and then a lot of other aspects about Elon's life that I found interesting. Of course you know what we did. We got some experts for you to read out loud. So I have a couple that I found were just captivating when I was reading. So the first one discusses uh, Zip2. This first company is kind of like, good morning. First company kind of like uh, Google Maps and Yelp and the Yellow Pages. So Musk never seemed to leave the office when he was working there. He slept not unlike a dog on a beanbag next to his desk. Almost every day I come in at 7.30 or 8 a.m. and he'd be asleep right there on the bag. Hellman said, one of the first employees of Zip2. Maybe he showered on the weekends, I don't know. Must ask those first employees of Zip2 to give him a kick when they arrived and he'd wake up and get back to work doing his possessed coder thing. Okay, so that's kind of Zip2. And then you may hear like, we're gonna go to Mars by 2022. We're gonna have the the third uh, or the low cost, high volume electric car by 2017. Okay, well, here's how Elon thinks. Musk approach, which has been set overly optimistic deadlines and then try to get his engineers to work nonstop for days on end to meet the goals. If you ask Elon how long it would take to do something, there was never anything in his mind that would take more than one hour. Uh, he came to uh, interpret an hour as more like uh, a day or two. And if Elon said it takes something a day, we'd allow a week or two. So he just scales time, good morning, differently, uh, which is fascinating, but also taxing on his employees. Um, so SpaceX has formed, interesting story about going to Russia and back. And then he says on the way back from Russia on the plane, he's like, good morning. Musk sat in the row front of them typing on his computer. We're thinking, effing idiot, what effing nerd. What's he think he's doing now? At which point Musk reeled around and flashed a spreadsheet. Good morning. He flashed a spreadsheet he created. He's like, hey guys, I think we can build the rocket ourselves. Okay? And then they go, we're thinking, yeah, and you and what effing army? And he's like, no, I'm serious. I have this spreadsheet. The document detailed the cost of materials needed to build, assemble, and launch a rocket. According to Musk calculations, he could undercut existing launch companies by building the modest sized rockets that would cater to the part of the market that specialized in carrying smaller satellites and research payloads to space. As you know, currently SpaceX is building satellites, their own for a worldwide internet system, and probably for a lot of other things, as well as launching satellites and stuff, cargo to the International Space Station. Come on. So it, it's really cool because it actually mentions the books that Elon read to learn about the rocket science. So I have those, or those are listed in here as well. Um, okay, the launch of the Falcon 1 rocket. Uh, in, March 20, in March 15, 2007, um, a successful fire took place on the launch stand. Okay? Um, the Falcon 1. Hi, good morning, guys. The Falcon 1 finally behaved. From its launch pad surrounded by palm trees on this remote atoll in the middle of the Pacific, uh, the Falcon 1 surged up and, towards, and, and surged towards space. It flew a couple of minutes with engineers now again reporting that all systems were normal. But then the wiggle that Mueller, one of the engineers, noticed turned into a failing, a flailing, and the machine soon started to break apart and then blew up. That's the second of the three launches that failed. Finally, on the fourth launch, they made it. 
So the reason for this I thought was pretty interesting. As the propellant was consumed, which left which was left started to move around the tank and slosh against the sides, much like a wine spinning around a glass. The sloshing, sloshing propellant triggered the wobbling and at one point it had enough to leave an opening in the engine exposed. When the engine sucked in a big breath of air, it flamed out. So I thought that was interesting to, to read more about the details about that, about that second uh, crash. Um, a couple facts about the Model S, the Tesla Model S that maybe you weren't aware of. Uh, they're referenced to Spinal Tap and the sound system goes to 11. Uh, it's kind of a funny joke that he put in there. And uh, the Model S and other electric cars are three to four times more efficient than internal combustion engines. Uh, and they can be powered from solar panels like the sun. Solar panels, which get the energy from the sun. Okay. One of the last chapters is the unified field theory of Elon Musk. So it kind of talks about his general MO. And so I thought this paragraph was pretty interesting. Let's dive in. Each facet of a Musk life must be an attempt to soothe a type of existential depression that seems to gnaw at his every fiber. He sees a man as self-limiting and in pearl and wants to fix the situation. The people who suggest bad ideas during meetings or make mistakes at work are getting in the way of all this and slowing Musk down. He does not dislike them as people. It's more that he feels pain by their mistakes, which have consigned man to pearl that much longer. The perceived lack of emotion is a symptom of Musk sometimes feeling that he's the only one who really grasps the urgency of his mission. He's less sensitive and less tolerant than other people because the stakes are so high. Employees need to help solve the problems to the absolute best of their ability or they need to get out of the way. So it's here that Ashley kind of highlights Musk's uh, drive and motive for why he's doing the ambitious things he's doing. I mean, putting a man on Mars and setting up a colony there is no small feat. And to do it at a pure drive and motivation to make to make uh, humans an interplanetary species is quite remarkable. So I think Ashley does a good job highlighting Musk's um, awesome accomplishments to this day.